Good afternoon, everyone. So how do we establish identity? Some say it's done through our memories or a set of beliefs about ourselves. But regardless, whenever we're interacting with other people, let's say with friends or family, um, we use that outward appearance, um, that set of unique characteristics, like the way we talk or carry ourselves or our facial features to recognize each other. So biometrics is simply that, um, the natural science of identifying individuals based on their universal, unique, um, persistent, and convenient features. So um, different beings may use um, different sources for biometric identification. For instance, dogs might prefer a sense of a smell. Um, snakes might uh, go with uh, thermal imaging. Um, by the same token, uh, machines, when they want to identify us, um, they may use different sources. Um, here are some examples. Some of them are common with how we identify each other. For example, faces and voices. But also, um, biometric technology could use patterns arising from eyes, such as irises, um, fingerprints, or vascular patterns. Also, um, you may use the vascular patterns seen in the white of the eyes and the micro features around it uh, to establish what we call iPrint. And iPrint ID, in fact, is a new biometric technology that I, along with my research team, have developed. You also notice that in the process, some sort of a um, digital signature was created. We'll talk about that later. So we all have these amazing magical tricoder-like devices in our pockets, right? Um, and um, exceedingly, there are more important functions that are being performed or carried out through these devices, um, from financial to even um, mobile wallets and so forth. Um, so these critical functions are performed on these ubiquitous devices, historically uh, unprecedented actually, in terms of how widely spread this technology is. Um, but being a mobile phone, they're prone to be misplaced or stolen or lost. Um, so the critical question is, who's holding the phone? Now, if we want to go by the way of biometrics to secure our mobile devices, we have to think about the most natural thing that we do when we interact with our phones. What do you do naturally when you use your phones? You either look at it or you touch it. So eyes and fingers are the way to go. So here's an example of this biometric in action. So you see a user just looking at her phone naturally, um, logs into her bank account a real user, a real bank account. So it um, takes less than 300 milliseconds to unencrypt this bank account. But it was all done through this ubiquitous selfie cameras that you all have in your pockets. Um, so this, this is going to be big. This is going to be a game changer. Um, so what are we doing at this day and age most of us at least, uh, to identify ourselves. We use passwords. But every single day you hear about another fiasco. Can you imagine 1.2 billion in the hands of a single person? Um, they're not secure anymore. And, and no wonder. Um, because on one hand, your passwords have to be long and complex and different and ever-changing on the other hand, you should be able to memorize them and manage them. It, it does simply not compute. It's a real pain. Actually, there was a recent study that suggested that uh, many Americans actually prefer to scrub their toilets than remember their passwords. <laughs> um, 
So <laughs> biometrics seems to be the natural answer to, to this problem that we have on our hands. Think about it. You are not what you memorize. You are not what you have. Those are surrogate tokens of identity. So passwords and keys are surrogate tokens of identity. You are not them. You are who you are, which is biometrics. So um, it's been a long journey to get to where we're at with respect to biometric technologies. Um, probably, um, uh, if you go back to the uh, earlier ages, uh, it was the village elder or the clergy that would vouch for your identity. But moving forward, um, probably uh, the, the first biometric documentation was the uh, British passports issued around World War I. Um, so it had the picture of, of the bearer and uh, their physical description uh, and, and, and credentials. So biometrics is binding your credentials to your identity. Um, the modern day equivalent is the driver license. But in the modern day, it's the explosive growth of mobile technology that is uh, propelling biometric technologies forward. So from logging into your phone to uh, paying by your phone, mobile wallet, the way money changes hands, online banking and shopping and so forth, they're all transitioning into a biometrically secure transaction. Um, in, as a matter of fact, developing world could benefit the most from these new biometric technologies because in the absence of traditional infrastructure, such as banking and so forth, um, in places where people don't even have drinking water, but they do have access to cell phones with data connection, they can pursue banking, financial transactions, medical transactions, and even educational services um, through these mobile technologies. Um, or if you think about uh, situations such as um, natural disasters or refugee crises where biometric could be the only identity solution at hand. Okay, so biometrics it is, but how to do it right? I'm arguing that the focus should be on privacy and security. In the earlier days of biometric technologies, biometrics was mostly something like a big brother, top-down uh, credential issuance, and it begs the question, who is going to control that, that verified ID? Who's, who's going to have um, access to it? Um, but the modern biometric technology is user-focused, it's private. So it's turning that old notion um, on its head. So it's the user that issues even multiple digital personalities for himself or herself and binds them through his or her biometrics. So you can have one set of credentials for your um, online shopping, but a different set of credentials, uh, for instance, for your social networks, then they're all bound together by your biometric identity that you control and you issue. So the first order of business when we're trying to create this private biometric technology is to address the issue of revocability. Now, wh what do I mean by revocability? Um, Naive sources of biometrics, like the patterns on your fingerprints or your eye patterns, once they're gone, they're gone. You cannot reissue them. So there are multiple ways to mitigate that, and we'll talk about one of them shortly. Also, um, we have to worry about linkability. We don't want, without our consent, at this day and age of big data, um, different nuggets about our identity to be linked back to our biometrics. So how to go about it? Um, one way to do so is to tokenize biometric identification. Think about, for example, your iPrint. 
and through a secure and one-way transformation, I'm turning this into a, your biometric nickname. So let's say it's a pair. So I'm never using or exposing your eye print. Your cell phone is using this nickname, and you can always revoke and change that nickname. So that addresses that problem. Um, also, identity is holistic. Multiple biometrics and cues of identity are not only more secure, but they're more accurate. Um, remember that old tale of a bunch of guys in a dark room and each of them was trying to figure out what it is that they're touching and all of them failed to figure out that it was an elephant because each of them were accessing just one aspect of that identity. Obviously, I'm not just a fingerprint, but what a fingerprint scanner does in isolation is just that. It says, I'm seeing a fingertip and it looks like what I could remember, but it does not mean that your whole self was present there. For instance, a side effect is when somebody could potentially lift your fingerprint and create a fake or spoof fingerprint out of Play-Doh or uh, Jell-O and uh, spoof your fingerprint scanner. Uh, multiple biometrics would address that issue. The other thing that we have to keep in mind about identity and verified identity is that identity is persistent. So once I have identified myself to, let's say, my cell phone, I should not have to continue scanning my biometric token because my identified self continues in time. On the flip side, once you leave your device, your device should also leave its authenticated state. As a matter of fact, every year, app stores lose hundreds of millions of dollars to litigation and other losses because somebody left their account logged in and their kid showed up and purchased something that they didn't want to. So moving forward, biometric should be holistic, persistent, and private. So as we interact with the objects in our environment, how and why should and can they identify us? Um, at this day and age, probably you've heard about IoT or Internet of Things, from automated homes to self-driving cars or soon to be self-driving cars and automated cars, um, we have intelligence embedded exceedingly in all the devices that surround us. But at the same time, you hear about these horror stories where from medical devices to car computers to even baby monitors and children toys being hacked. So you really want to make sure, for instance, that the car that you're driving knows it's you who's trying to control it, not a hacker from thousands of miles away. It seems like with the exceeding biometric powers of these ubiquitous devices called cell phones that most of us have in our pockets, it just makes sense to use them as the verified or biometrically identified tokens of identity to assert our identity uh, as we interact with these different devices. This is more so important because for the first time, these intelligent devices, they're not just crunching numbers, they're directly interacting with our surroundings and, the, uh, and, and our physical world. So, to recap, it seems that biometrics is the natural answer to an ailing and cumbersome identification process that is using surrogate tokens of identity, um, something that you have or something that you have memorized. So imagine a future where your digital lives are secured, your privacy is preserved, 
and even countless lives are saved when, for instance, weapons refuse to operate for unrecognized users. For instance, the warlords find that the armaments that they're trying to use are not recognizing them and thus not letting them to go through. So thank you for your attention and have a great afternoon.